50 years ago this week, humankind first set foot on the moon, that inspiring a generation of stargazers and future astronauts. In these scenes, in these moments before boarding, you see Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins suiting up. A few thoughtful moments before launching into space. And the final touches representing years of training and years of research before making that historic flight and landing on the moon. Joining us now is someone who knows about the training, the work it takes to get to that moment. Colonel Jeremy Hansen is set to be Canada's next astronaut in space. And this morning we reached him just outside of Kingston, Ontario. I'm so thrilled that you're able to come in and talk to us about this. Now, you weren't born when the moon landing happened, but it must have inspired you. Yeah, it's so neat how, uh, you know, such a significant event was still resonating years later. And I have this very specific memory as a child of flipping through Encyclopedia A, looking at the airplanes, which I often did, because I was fascinated by flight and coming across Armstrong in that encyclopedia and seeing a picture of a human standing on the moon. And that just blew my mind. And I thought, wow, I want to be a space explorer one day. That's what, do you think that's what really triggered you to move into what you do now? I mean, it's hard to say for sure, but yeah, I, I give it a lot of credit because after that, I recall, I mean, there's another book in the library. I was going back to my school library and looking for space stuff now. And then I found this book on building moon, lunar bases and such things. And uh, yeah, I really think that got me going about exploring space. And, you know, it wasn't long later, I was, uh, I t turned my tree house into a rocket ship. I made dials and controls. I had circuit breakers for switches and all these things. And then I was telling teachers I would like to be an astronaut. So yeah, it had to come from somewhere. And I, I wasn't seeing it in real life until later in school when I was watching the shuttle uh, fly. I love that story about your treehouse. That's amazing. Um, so when you talk about Apollo 11, how do you think that that's helped us understand outer space? Well, I mean, for one thing, uh, the moon is a time capsule. So from a geologist point of view, I've had the privilege of doing some geology training, specifically with Western University, and just gives us a different perspective. But the moon is absolutely a time capsule for our solar system and how it was formed. That's one uh, very you know significant uh, benefit to us but also i think just the fact that a human being stood on another planetary body and then could look back from the moon and see our planet i mean that those images that came from apollo of our own planet i mean i think they they're still significant today and they've had a real impact that you know astronauts say this stuff all the time but it's because it really resonates with them from space is that we live on one rock hurtling through space, and it's the only rock that we can possibly survive on. I think it, it gives us a sense of stewardship, and it gives us a sense of community, and uh, those are good things for us today. When you think about the training that they went through and the training that you have been through already, and you're likely to be the next Canadian to go into space, talk about the training, that, that, you know, that whole process. Yeah, it's really fascinating to, even, to look specifically at the Apollo astronauts training program as it is today, but it's very diverse. It was very diverse back then. They, they were studying geology, going on these really neat field trips with some of the world's leading geologists, learning how to see things differently, see it through a geologist's eyes. But then on top of that, they're developing new vehicles to take them to the moon. They're doing all this testing. They're preparing themselves um, physically. They're learning how to do spacewalks. But the one thing that's kind of neat for me to see is that all those simulators they had, some of them, you know, they flew, they were simulators in a building, uh, none of them were quite right. And that's the job of an astronaut is figuring out, okay, what does this simulation teach me and how might it be different and how do I prepare for those unknowns? And the unknowns that the first astronauts faced on the moon were significant. And I think that's, that's exploration. That's the stuff that gets us fired up is taking on those challenges and, we're doing that today. I mean, it's part of what the Canadian Space Agency is working on right now is sending um, us out further into the solar system. We're, we've partnered to be part of this uh, lunar gateway, which is, is just literally that. It's a gateway to the lunar surface. It's a gateway beyond the moon, setting up reusable infrastructure. I mean, we're taking on real challenges today and doing them in a sustainable way. 
Uh, this is the stuff that just gets us fired up, and it's really fun to be thinking about it 50 years later from Apollo, and we've learned so much, and we're, we're continuing to implement it. Explain that lunar gateway a little bit more. It's pretty exciting. This would be a gateway to the moon and even potentially beyond. Yeah, the way to think about this is reusable transportation infrastructure. That's what it's all about. The gateway is almost like an airport hub in the solar system. So you can use it for whatever you need to use it for. But one of the major enablers will be getting back to the surface of the moon. So think of a really small space station, but more than that, it's a parking space in, in space where you can refuel um, your spacecraft, repair them robotically. You can do, um, you can obviously reuse them over and over again. Whereas if you look at the Apollo infrastructure, Everything was thrown away. It was a very expensive program, and you just could barely get to the center of the moon, like the equator of the moon. We want to go to other places on the moon now. So uh, this is the infrastructure that will allow us to do it. And for you, do you hope to ever step foot on the moon? Do you think that's a part of your future? Well, I, you know, I think it's hard to say. I don't, I don't, you know, my life doesn't count on getting to the moon. But yeah, I'm super excited about that possibility that uh, that I might walk on the moon someday. It's been a dream, a childhood dream for me. But I, one thing I know for sure is Canadians will make it to the moon. Uh, I'm certain I'll see it in my lifetime. And uh, I'm going to be a big part of enabling Canadians to walk on the moon. And I'd love to be one of those, one of many who will walk on the moon someday. And you know, you look at what's happened in the past 50 years. When you look ahead to the next 50, what do you see happening? Yeah, space, is, I tell our youth this all the time, space is changing so rapidly. And I, I see so, the writing is on the wall. Uh, when you look at commercial space travel, it is really taking hold. The cost of going to space is coming down. Reusability is going way up. So in the way that you get in a transportation aircraft today, a commercial aircraft today to fly around the world, you will, in the next decades, you will just get on a spaceship and travel into space. People are going to be seeing our planet from beyond its atmosphere with their own eyes. I think that bodes well for all of us. And maybe even uh, people will be going for uh, vacations to visit the moon or orbit the moon. And these things are very, very plausible today. There's a lot of work to be done. It's still very, very challenging. But um, we are progressing rapidly. And for, for Canadian youth who are interested in space, they need to know the Canadian Space Agency is working hard to make sure there's a viable program for them to really push themselves to uh, be part of exploring space in a, in a real meaningful way. Uh, that's exciting for me. And could you potentially be commanding one of those ships that take people on these trips to the moon? Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is the skill set I've been developing for years is uh, flying, getting ready to fly in space and, uh, you know, being prepared for those unknowns. And uh, I've always enjoyed sharing aviation with people, taking people for flights in airplanes and showing them the, the world from up above. And uh, I could definitely see myself doing that in the future, taking people uh, into space and just showing them the ropes of what it's like to be there.